Hello everyone, and today I am going to be showing you the Vanderbilt family tree. As you can see on the side of the screen, bottom we have the Vanderbilt family. So I'm going to be today showing you basically the entire family tree of the very famous family. Pretty much as far as the early 1900s and late 1800s go, the royal family of America. Essentially, for those of you that don't know about the railroad tycoon himself, Cornelius Vanderbilt, he was probably one of, if not the richest man in the history of the United States. One of the richest men in the history of the United States. And how did he get so rich? Well, mainly because of his railroad tycoon monopoly. This man was insane. But before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that um, this is a family tree video style. Um, I've done family tree videos in the past, specifically the one that I did back in February of last year, the Man of War family tree, which was based on racehorses. But now we're doing the Vanderbilt family tree. Now, a couple days ago, I posted a video of the Biltmore Estate Tour, which is located in Asheville, North Carolina. I highly recommend you check that out after this video if you haven't already. I'll leave it in the end screen so you guys can click on it right afterwards. But we're going to be looking at the Vanderbilt family. Now, Cornelius Vanderbilt is the main man here. As you can see over here, Cornelius Vanderbilt was born on the 27th of May of 1794. This man is very, very revolutionary. Um, in the United States. He was really the first tycoon of the railroad industry. Now, for those of you that don't know how big railroad railroad companies were in the 1800s, that was basically the only form of, the biggest form of transportation. He started out during the War of 1812 and post-War of 1812 doing in the steamboat industry, and that was pretty profitable until the uh, Gibbons v. Ogden Supreme Court case in 1824, which kind of cut him off from that. So then he started to get into the railroad business, um, first buying his first major railroad company in 1863. As you can see below me, the dates, 1863 to 1877, that's really when he, when this empire lasted. Now, Cornelius Vanderbilt, unlike some of the other tycoons of his time, um, or a little bit later, such as Rockefeller or Andrew Carnegie or J.P. Morgan, for example, pretty much sold their companies later on in their life. Vanderbilt did not. He kept the wealth through his family, and actually his family is, for generations, was able to feed off of his wealth. He gained so much money that he would actually, himself, his own net worth was worth more money than the amount of currency that was in the freaking United States Treasury at the time. That's how wealthy this man was. And basically, it made it so that way most of his descendants didn't even have to work their entire lives because they spent their entire lives using his money. And they built huge later on, but it's kind of crazy. So Cornelius Vanderbilt, before we get into his descendants, those are the main ones we're looking at today, but we also need to go through his ancestry as well. I tracked a little bit up his family tree through his ancestors here. I just made this on Ancestry.com, so bear with me. It's not like a handcrafted family tree or anything like that. So I was able to find his great-grandparents and then going up his strict male line to see where the Vanderbilt name comes from, which you'll find out here in a second. So we're going to go through his ancestors before we go through his descendants, obviously. So Van Cornelius Vanderbilt himself was born on Staten Island, New York on the 27th of May, 1794, and passed away on the 4th of January, 1877 in Manhattan. So the Vanderbilts are from New York, uh, for those of you that didn't know. And I tried to keep living people that do not have public lives out of it just because they're private citizens and stuff. So once we get too far down, most of these people are deceased. I believe I have one living person on this tree, but it's a public personnel, so that's why it's on there. Um, so that's Vanderbilt. He died in 1877, and once he did, he left all his wealth to his kids and his grandkids. Now, Cornelius Vanderbilt himself, he had two parents, obviously. His father was Cornelius Vanderbilt, um, so technically he was a junior, but he does not go by Cornelius Vanderbilt Jr. or Cornelius Vanderbilt II. He's just simply the OG Cornelius Vanderbilt, but his father was also named Cornelius Vanderbilt. 
This guy, uh, his father was born on the 28th of all, on August 28th of 1764 in Essex County, Essex County, New Jersey. Um, and then died in Staten Island, New York City on May 20th of 1832. So his father May, uh, was born in 1764. His father is from New Jersey. And then I guess at a young age, before he had kids, he moved to New York. Now, Cornelius Vanderbilt was the third of seven children. He was the eldest son of Cornelius Vanderbilt. In total, Cornelius Vanderbilt's parents had two sons and um, four daughters, or two sons and five daughters. So we'll get into that here in a second. So his mother, Cornelius Vanderbilt's mother, was Phoebe Hand. Now there's a picture of her right there. She was born on April 15th of 1767. Hey, it's April 15th today. So today she would have turned 256 years old, but she's dead, so... She was also from New Jersey. She was from Rahway Union County, New Jersey. Today is Phoebe Hand's birthday, so it's kind of cool. She died on January 22nd of 1854 in Staten Island. So she was able to outlive a couple of her kids. So that kind of sucks. But she was from New Jersey, and uh, Cornel both Cornelius Vanderbilt's father and his mother were both from New Jersey, and then they moved to New York. So... The eldest child in this family was Mary Polly Vanderbilt, who was born in 1787 in New Jersey and died in Staten Island in 1845. And then the second was Charlotte Vanderbilt. Now, Charlotte Vanderbilt was born on December 29th of 1792 in Staten Island, New York, and died on January 5th of 1877 in Tompkinsville, Staten Island, New York. So she only died. Cornelius Vanderbilt's sister died the day after him. He died on January 4th. She died on January 5th of, of 1877. Now, pretty interesting how that works out. So, we I don't know the exact year, but Cornelius Vanderbilt's father and his mother, Phoebe Hand, Cornelius Vanderbilt, moved to New York sometime between 1787 and 1792 because their eldest child was born in New Jersey, but their second child was born in New York. So, kind of interesting how that works out. Their third child, obviously, was Cornelius Vanderbilt himself, born in 1794 in New York, Staten Island. The third child happened to be Jane Vanderbilt, which was a daughter. She was born in 1798. It is unknown where she was born, but most likely New York, and she passed away in May of 1866. That is her gravestone right there. Charlotte Vanderbilt, all we have is her obituary. Eleanor Vanderbilt, we don't know anything about. This was the next child. She was born in 1804. January of 1804 and died in April of 1833. So she only lived to be 29 years old. Um, something must have happened to her that is unknown. And then the only other son of these guys is Jacob Hand Vanderbilt. Um, Hand obviously comes from his mother's maiden name, Jacob Hand Vanderbilt. He was born in 1807 in New York and died in 1893 in Stapleton, Staten Island, March of 1893 is when she was when Jacob Hand Vanderbilt died. And the last child is Phoebe Vanderbilt, and she was born in 1810 in Richmond City, Staten Island, and died in April of 1885. So that is Cornelius Vanderbilt's immediate family, basically. None of his descendants. So we're going up the line here. We'll get to his spouses once we get back down. So we're just doing immediate family. Nothing that he really took part in. Um, so... Cornelius Vanderbilt's paternal side, we'll start with here. So let's go through his four grandparents. So some of these we don't have pictures of. But Cornelius Vanderbilt's grandfather on his dad's side, so his dad's dad, his paternal grandfather, was a man named Jacob Vanderbilt, who was born on January of 1723 in Richmond City, Staten Island. So he was actually born in New York, had his son in, in New Jersey somehow, and died in New York in October of 1768. His paternal grandmother was a woman named Mary Sprague. She was born in Staten Island on February of uh, on February 18th of 1729, and died in December 14th of 1781 in New York. So Mary Sprague was born in uh, February of 1729, dies in December of 1781 in. Um, 
New York. So she was from New York, well, it was. His maternal grandparents were Captain Samuel Ham. Captain Samuel Ham served as a captain, I believe, during the um, American Revolution or the French and Indian War, one of the two. He was born in Westfield, New Jersey in 1728, passed away in 1817 in New Brunswick, Canada. So he would, would have been the only, like, grandparent that Cornelius Vanderbilt could have met would have been his maternal grandfather because his other three grandparents were dead by the time he was born in 1794. Also, Cornelius Vanderbilt's way older than most people think he is. His maternal grandmother is Phoebe Lum. Um, she was born on May of uh, May 25th of 1737 in Madison, New Jersey. Died in seven, dies in 1788 in Beaver Harbor, Harbor, which is in New Brunswick, Canada today. So those are his four grandparents. So um, mostly from New Jersey. Um, his father's side are from New York, and his mother's side are from New Jersey. So that makes sense. So now we get to his eight great grandparents. So we're gonna start with his um, most maternal side here because I didn't do any research past this point. Although it has potential parents, we're not gonna go up too far, mainly because it's, the records get really sketchy once you get back in the 1600s. Plus the Vanderbilt family wasn't that wealthy back before um, Cornelius did his railroad stuff. So his mother's mother's mother was Susanna, it was a woman named Susanna Woodruff. Um, there is a picture of her grave, um, however I don't have it on here. She was born sometime around 1695, we don't know the exact year, but it said that she died in seven, on May 23rd of 1758 at the age of 65, which would mean that she would have been born in 1695. But we don't know for sure, she could have been born in 1694, so either 1694 or 1695. She was much older than her husband, Obadiah Lum, who was Phoebe Lum's father. He was born on March 10th of 1708 in Suffolk, New York, Southampton. That is on July 6th of 1783 in Rockway, New Jersey. So, very interesting. He's actually born in New York and then moved to New Jersey, had his daughter there. Um, Captain Samuel Hand, or we'll do the Sprags right now because these are kind of interesting. Uh, Mary Sprague, who was uh, his paternal grandmother, her father was Jacob Sprague, born in 1694. This is a photograph of them, supposedly. Uh, he's from Hepstead, New York. Dies on November 14th of 1745 in New Jersey. Don't think we went up his line anywhere. Uh, Dorothy Stoddard, I just wanted to get this out just so you get a feeling. Um, I kind of just put bits and pieces of the tree in here, so just keep that in mind. This isn't like the full thing, but these are all accurate. That's in here. Dorothy Sarah Stoddard who is his great-grandmother, um, was born on December 28th of 1711 in Hingham, Plymouth, Massachusetts. So she was actually from Plymouth County, Massachusetts. Now, her ancestry could go back to the Mayflower. Odds of that are pretty high, um, but who knows. She died in Plymouth, actually, on March 25th of 1786, somehow. So she, I guess, moved back after her husband died. Because he died in 1745. She lived about 41 years after he died. So, pretty interesting there. Uh, now we're into the hands. Now we'll do those after this. So, Cornelius Vanderbilt's male line here. Neil T. Denise was his other great grandmother. She was born on February 10th of 1698, dies on December 9th of 1770 in New York. It's unknown where she was born, but she did die in New York in 1770. Very interesting there. Um, didn't go up her that line there. Jacob Vanderbilt was his great grandfather, strict male line, great grandfather, direct male line with the Vanderbilt name. He was also born in New York in 1692 and dies in 1759 in Staten Island, December 14th of 1759, Staten Island there. So if you get up his male line here, we get to the name, um, the Vanderbilt. So Jacob Vanderbilt's name was changed. Um, he made it, as most people did coming over to the United States, made their name, coming over to America, from, that were not from England, tried to make their name sound more English. So his father was Eris Jans. Van Der Bilt, literally. Three separate words, Van Der Bilt. And that is where the name Vanderbilt comes from. They just combined it all into one word. But it used to be three separate words, Van Der Bilt, which is Dutch. For those of you that don't know. Now, 
uh, Vanderbilt. This was the first guy born from from the European. He was born in 1653 in New Utrecht, Kings, New York, in 1653. So he was born in New York in 1653. So he's going back for fuck. He died about 1715 in Flatbush, New York. Um, so that's all we know about him. It's unknown who the mother of Jacob Vanderbilt was, but Jan A. Van. Artsgen Van Der Bilt was born in 1615 in De Bilt, Utrecht, the Netherlands. Um, so he was actually from the Netherlands. That's where you get the Dutch Van Der Bilt from. And he dies in 1705 in New Jersey. So he eventually gets to New Jersey. So they're kind of like... The reason you got people in New Jersey is because New York City is so flippin' close to New Jersey that they're basically in New York City. New York City is almost pretty much in New York. What's going on? Where is... What? Where is Gwen's grave at? It's in uh, Miamisburg folks Eris uh, Vanderbilt so Van Der Bilt he was from the Netherlands and then his this guy here uh, Anakin Hendricks was the mother she was the great 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 grandmother and third great grandmother of Cornelius Vanderbilt she was born in 1629 in Norway dies in New York in 1655 so probably they're both their families came to New York in the 1600s um, and then they met and got married there. That's probably what happened. Um, so now we're going to go up the mother's line. I don't think I was able to find his father. Um, there's a potential uh, relative. We can review the details here, but I doubt it's right. Um, apparently this guy claims to be born in 1600. That's, that's not true because he's not going to be 15 having a child. That's just not... Died in 1705 in the Netherlands, so just kind of disputed on that. You don't really know. So for his other great grandparents on his on the hand side of the family, Samuel Hand's father was Nehemiah Hand, who was born in the year 1700 um, in New Jersey, Cape May County. Dies in December 27th of 1776 in Elizabeth, New Jersey. That's his gravestone. And his wife was Lydia Hand. It's unknown what her maiden name was, but. Uh, hand. She was born in 1701, the year after him, and died in 1776, the same year. She just died about a month before him in November of 1776, uh, November 9th. Now, it's unknown. We can't go up the hand line anymore. So those are all the direct ancestors. Cornelius Vanderbilt that I could find is tracing it back to the early 1600s in the Netherlands. So basically the Vanderbilt name is Dutch. So there you go. So now we're going to get into like the actual interesting part. Now that was interesting, but we're going to get more into what this is all about here. So Cornelius Vanderbilt had two wives. Um, I'm trying to see what I can get to. Turn both on here. So he married twice because his first wife died. Um, so his first wife was a woman named Sophia Johnson. That's the one he had. Cornelius Vanderbilt had a total of 13 kids. He had nine daughters and four sons. But he had all of his kids with his first wife, Sophia Johnson. She was born in 1795 in New York. Dies in New York in 1868. So he was still alive when she died. So he actually got remarried again to Frank Crawford. Frank A. Crawford, who was a very young girl, basically, at the time. Uh, his second wife was younger than all of his kids. Yeah, that's... That's kind of... Eh. But uh, January of 1839 is when she was born, and then uh, 1885 was when she died. So she didn't live much long after him. She died relatively young, at the age of, like, 46. So she was pretty young. But... Cornelius Vanderbilt, here are all of his children here. I'm not going to go through like all of the dates and stuff because I don't want to bore you to death because it's a lot of it. You can see the years for himself. I'm just going to go over the what's important. Now, I only traced down his grandchildren through his eldest son's line because through all of his daughters, of course, because they're women, they don't carry that Vanderbilt name down with them as they get more offsprings. It's only going to go through the sons. But out of Cornelius Vanderbilt, although he had four sons, only his eldest son actually had kids. None of the other three had any children. So, um, his eldest child was Phoebe Jane Vanderbilt, who was born in 1814. They were all born in New York. Just keep that in mind. She was born in 1814. 
Um, and then Ethelinda Vanderbilt, followed by Elizabeth or Eliza Vanderbilt. So his first three children were daughters. His he had his first son is his fourth child in 1821, May of 1821, in New Jersey. He was where he was born. He died on December 8th of 1885. This is William Henry Vanderbilt, who was the eldest son of Cornelius Vanderbilt. Mainly when Cornelius died, most of his wealth went to William Henry Vanderbilt. So, and like all the wealthy descendants, um, the man who built the Biltmore, um, George Washington Vanderbilt, was the son of William Henry Vanderbilt, which we'll get to in a second. So we'll pull up his kids here. These are his kids. But there was also Emily Elmira Vanderbilt, which is the only child that we don't have a picture of. She was born in 1823. And then there was Sophia Maria Francis, the next three daughters. Well, I know they all are, 1825, 1827, 1829. So about every two years, they child. In 1830, uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt had his second son, uh, Cornelius Jeremiah Vanderbilt. Not Cornelius Vanderbilt II, but he's Cornelius Jeremiah Vanderbilt. He was born on December 29th of 1830, dies on April 2nd of 1882. Cornelius Jeremiah Vanderbilt never ends up having any kids, so his line dies with him. Um, and then there was the third son who only lived to be about four years old, Cor uh, George Washington Vanderbilt I. And you'll see why he's the first, because... He was born in 1832, dies in 1836, does not live long at all. And then the last two daughters were Maria Alicia and Catherine Vanderbilt. But after that was the last son, who was George Washington Vanderbilt, Captain George Washington Vanderbilt. He was a captain during the American Civil War and actually died in, in France during the war from an illness that he got on the battlefield. Um, but they named the son the same name as the previous child that died. That's why he's known as George Washington Vanderbilt I. This is just George Washington Vanderbilt, although theoretically he's the second George Washington Vanderbilt. There's going to be more George Washington Vanderbilts. He's not the only one. But he, he only lives to be about 20. Um, he's like 24 when he dies. He dies on December 31st of 1863 in Nice, France. So he, he serves in the Civil War, gets sick, goes to France, and dies there. So that's what happened to him. Obviously, never has any kids. So now we're going to go to the grandkids of Cornelius Vanderbilt. So he's only got, as far as his strict male line goes, he's only got four grandkids that have the Vanderbilt name, obviously. I think he William Henry Vanderbilt had some daughters, but we're just worried about the sons, typically, because that's the only, like, Vanderbilt. That's the Vanderbilts. Or the sons, the Vanderbilt family. So these guys ended up having a ridiculous amount of wealth, these four people here. Uh, the first one was Cornelius Vanderbilt II. So you notice this is Cornelius Vanderbilt II, which is confusing because you think if this is the OG Cornelius Vanderbilt, why wouldn't this be Cornelius Vanderbilt II? And actually, his father was Cornelius Vanderbilt. So shouldn't he just be Cornelius Vanderbilt II? No, because he's the OG and they don't count him. But they count him. This is Cornelius Vanderbilt II. second. Well, theoretically, he should probably be Cornelius Vanderbilt the fourth, but he's Cornelius Vanderbilt the second. Maybe the third. I don't even know. He's the second though. He was born in 1843. He was all from New York, and he New York, November 27th of 1843. He dies in 1899 at the age of like he's like 60. So he's like 50 something, 55, four, ah, 50, 56. I can't do math right. Uh, then there was William uh, Kissam Vanderbilt, who was born in 1849, and he died in 1920. And then there was Frederick William Vanderbilt, and then George Washington Vanderbilt. Now, this is just flat-out George Washington Vanderbilt and no Roman numerals. This guy is significant because he's the one who built the Biltmore Mansion in North Carolina. A lot of people think that the original Cornelius Vanderbilt lived there, but he did not. This is... Um, uh, this is the guy who built the Biltmore um, in 1895. 1895. He was born in 1862, dies in 1914. After he died, he he only had one daughter, um, Cornelia Vanderbilt, and sh she basically had the rights to the mansion um, at the age of like 13 when he died in 1914 because she was born in 1900. Um, she had two sons, although they're not Vanderbilts. I decided to put them there because they were pretty revolutionary. Uh, George Henry Vanderbilt Cecile and then William um, Amherst Cecile. So Cecile is who she married. 
Uh, Cornelia Vanderbilt pretty much like never worked her whole life because these guys just fed off of the original guy's money. But you got to think about Cornelia as the great granddaughter of Cornelius Vanderbilt. But obviously with the Vanderbilt last name, her direct male line, great grandfather. So these guys are Cecile's, but they're still a descent. They still descend from Cornelius Vanderbilt. It's just not from a strict male line. They don't carry the Vanderbilt name. In them. So I believe I I don't think. This guy had kids, but it could be wrong if these two had sons. I don't know if they did, but the only interesting stuff were on this, and I don't want this video to be too long. So, Cornelius Vanderbilt II, his eldest son was William uh, Henry Vanderbilt II. William Henry Vanderbilt II. Now, William Henry Vanderbilt obviously was the father of these guys, the eldest son of Cornelius Vanderbilt, the OG, the original, original gangster, whatever you call him. I don't even know. Uh, he was born in 1870, dies in 1892. He only lives to be 22, and he never has any kids. So, pretty sad story with him. I don't know how he died, but he died in New York. It's probably from some sort of like sickness or something like that. Then there was Cornelius Vanderbilt the third. So the second son of Cornelius Vanderbilt the second is Cornelius Vanderbilt the third, and this is where you kind of get the Cornelius Vanderbilt empire. Now, he was born in 1873. Uh, he dies in F Miami, Florida on March 1st of 1942, so he lives quite a long time after that. Going through his descendants, he has one son, Cornelius Vanderbilt IV, to carry on the empire. So Cornelius Vanderbilt the original, Cornelius Vanderbilt the second, third, fourth. Now Cornelius Vanderbilt IV was born in 1898, dies in 1974 in Florida, uh, Miami Beach. Cornelius Vanderbilt IV, although he married seven times, never produced any kids. So his line dies with him. So the Cornelius Vanderbilt empire pretty much died with him. Now, most of these people lived in wealth, um, and the only reason was because of their their great-great-grandfather, his great-great-grandfather. So there was no Cornelius Vanderbilt V. Cornelius Vanderbilt IV was the farthest they got. Um, kind of a shame, especially because he had seven marriages. He never he even had a kid with any of his wives, which is kind of crazy. I don't know what I'm saying, guys. So anyway, but yeah, he married seven times, never had any kids. The third son of Cornelius Vanderbilt II is pretty interesting because Alfred Gwynn Vanderbilt, he was born in 1877 in Manhattan, actually was. It's kind of interesting how he died. So he died on May 7th of 1915 at sea. Now this guy was actually on the Lusitania. The great-grandson of Cornelius Vanderbilt was one of the victims of the Lusitania. Now, for those of you that don't know, during um, World War I, um, in May of 1915, there was a ship traveling from New York to London. It was a British ship, but there were American passengers on it. Um, and off the coast of Ireland, this ship was... Um, Hit with a tor was struck with a torpedo from a German U-boat, uh, led by the German Empire, obviously. A German U-boat launched a torpedo and hit the Lusitania and caused it to sink. And there were barely any lifeboats on it. Uh, Alfred Vanderbilt, being as wealthy as he was, he was kind of a top-class passenger, so he kind of got to get to the lifeboat first. He gave it up so he could let some, some children on to the boat. And he saved their lives, but he, in the process, lost his life. But he was helping a lot of people reach, um, get onto the lifeboats. Uh, that ship disaster killed about 120 people. Um, and that is what caused the United States to declare war on the German Empire, basically getting us into World War I. But that happened in May of 1915. Alfred Gwynn Vanderbilt was tragically killed by that attack, which is pretty interesting when you think about it. Because he's really the only guy of note that I could really think of that was on the Lusitania. Um, so, pretty deadly attack there. Um, that was just three years after the Titanic, so pretty interesting how that works out. Although, obviously, there's there's differences because that was actually meant to happen. Unlike with the Titanic, and way more people died, and it was not really an attack. It was just like they just accidentally sunk. But the Lusitania was a strictly one of the deadliest ship disasters as far as like a it was for it was during world war one the main reason germany uh the german empire sunk it anyway was because they were going against britain but there just happened to be american passengers on the boat which ticked us off and that caused the united states to declare war on the german empire 
Anyway, Alfred Vanderbilt's eldest son, William Henry Vanderbilt III, actually served as the governor of Rhode Island from 1939 to 1943, I think, one term. Uh, I believe it was 1939 to 1943. Could have been 1937 to 1933, but I, 1943. I don't know. But he was a governor of Rhode Island back in the 1930s and 1940s. Um, he was born in Staten Island, New York, in November 24th of 1901. He dies in 1981 in Massachusetts. So, but he does serve as the governor of Rhode Island. He also serves in World War One. I believe, toward the end of it. I don't know for sure, but I think he was in the military. I believe. But don't quote me on that. But I know he served... Um, I know he was in the military. I don't know if he served during a war, but uh, he did serve as the governor of Rhode Island, and that was like the biggest thing that he had going for him. Obviously, with all the money, he could definitely fund the campaign. Pretty intelligent guy, probably, too. Uh, Alfred Gwynn Vanderbilt II was the uh, second son. He was born in 1912 in London, England. So he was actually born in Europe. Dies in Nassau, New York, in 18 or in 1999. And the third son was George Washington Vanderbilt III. And I'm a guess. I'm guessing that this was George Washington Vanderbilt the um, the second, which would make this guy George Washington Vanderbilt the first. Although this was technically George Washington. Vanderbilt first. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, the Vanderbilt family is not good with Roman numerals. Let's just get that out of the way. Uh, he lived from 1914 to 1961. Not too much to say about him. But he never had any sons, I don't, I don't think. Um, Alfred Vanderbilt II had two kids of note. Uh, Wendy Maria Vanderbilt, right here, um, was his daughter. She just died back in 2016. Uh, she was born in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles. Um, so she had a pretty big role there. And then this other son was Nicholas Hardy Vanderbilt lives from 1958 to 1984. Um, I don't know what exactly Willie, um, she might have been a movie star, I don't really know for sure. And then there was Reginald Vanderbilt. Reginald uh, Claypool Vanderbilt. He was born in 1880, dies in 1925, Rhode Island. Now he is the, the grandfather of a pretty interesting guy. Uh, the only living person I have on here. So his daughter, he had two daughters, Kathleen Vanderbilt, 1904-1944. She's not very known, but she was from New York. She died, actually died in Cuba. But his second daughter was a model, Gloria Vanderbilt. Now, she obviously grew up not really, like, you know, living off of her great-great-grandfather's wealth, just like all the other Vanderbilts did. She was born in 1924. She just died in 2019. She was a model, um back in the, like, way back, like 70 years ago, but she was pretty famous for, throughout her life, and then her son is a man named Anderson Cooper, he's not, he was a CNN personnel, and he might still, I think he still is, but he was pretty popular back in the day, he's still alive, he's born on June 3rd of 1967, he's, he's about, he's all, he's 55 years old, so, he, um, is actually a descendant of Cornelius Vanderbilt, for those people that know him. Uh, he was pretty popular back in the day, from my knowledge, but he was the son of Gloria Vanderbilt. He's pretty well known of that, but obviously doesn't carry that Vanderbilt last name. But he, uh, Anderson Cooper, he's a um, kind of like a television guy, uh, well-known household name pretty much for some people, or for the CNN broadcasters. So that's pretty cool. He is a descendant of Cornelius Vanderbilt. Um but he actually kind of had to work to get where he was at because by the time he was born, the, the Cornelius Vanderbilt's wealth was kind of lost with because a lot of his family just spent all of his money, especially like George Washington Vanderbilt building the Biltmore. It was hundred million, multi hundred million dollars to build that. Just insane. I mean, even for back then equivalent today, like my God. They just blew all of his money. The, the the richest family in the United States went broke in a few generations, which is kind of sad. They could probably still have the wealth today, but just because most of these guys never worked um, just because of of that. And they're in nice suits and stuff. You think they'd hold good positions, which they did, but like they never really worked. They just had all that money, especially these uh, his daughters and stuff. I believe some money probably went to them too, but mostly went down this line just because his, grand, his son had actually had kids. So that's kind of how that is. That's the family tree of Cornelius Vanderbilt, checking out a few of his descendants, kind of telling some stories on his ancestry and stuff like that. 
So that's a quick little video. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, I can do it for some other families. Uh, I just thought the Vanderbilt family was kind of relevant because of the video I just posted and then I thought it was pretty interesting and the Vanderbilt family is pretty well known. So let me know what you guys thought about that. And with that all said and done, be sure to, uh, or I'll see you guys next time. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Wow.